Hello, this is John Fiala for those of you watching at home, and I am presenting on how Ager wants to save your sanity. Okay, and I apologize for all the ums, I will try to keep them at a minimum. So, uh, who am I? Well, I've been doing web programming for about 10 years now, uh, about exactly three years doing Drupal. I I have a couple of modules that I take care of, uh, link, Drupal markup engine, back reference, own term, uh, and I need to get moving on actually getting these over to 7 soon, because it looks like we're actually going to hit a beta within the next month, I think. We'll see. But it would be good. So, uh, Agar, in very brief, Wikipedia says Agar is the sea giant, god of the sea, and king of the sea creatures in Norse mythology which means it's a good name for something that controls Drupal. What do I have on the next slide? Right, okay, cool. So what Agar does is it's a website that controls websites. It provisions websites. It allows you to do some basic tasks on websites. And as Agar becomes more mature, I'm expecting we'll see add-on modules that will do further things. I'm currently working with Agar at the National Renewable Energy Laboratories a bit. And some folks at append to are doing some work for us. And among other things, they're going to do a uh, automated security scan where you can hit a button and do a security scan and so forth. So I really think that in time, we're going to see a whole bunch of neat extensions for how to handle common Drupal tasks. That's basically what Agar is, is it's a whole bunch. It, it's kind of like Drush. It's a whole bunch of interfaces to handle common tasks that you that everybody just kept having to do. Uh, it allows you to create sites, uh, move sites around, and whereas before multi-site was a bit of a pain because you had to go through and turn everything off and then move the code over and then do the updates and all that, it gets a lot easier with this. Uh, however, it is a bit bleeding edge. Uh, the current version is 0 0.4 alpha 9. That came out earlier this week, and my attempts at installing it did not work. Well, installing on a virtual machine, I think installing on a more traditional machine might actually work better, but eh, Alpha 8 will work well enough for, for getting you accustomed to how it works, and hopefully it'll be a little easier. Excuse me. Yes? Just ask you why you, uh, why it would work differently on a virtual machine. Well, I think, and I'm not certain, because it's possible it only works differently because I screwed something up. Um, but, so the question was, for those listening at home, why it would work differently on a virtual machine than a physical machine. And it's got to do with the fact that Agar Alpha 9 is trying to be more site generic, where it's hosting the databases for sites that are on different machines and it wants to be able to reference itself, and I think I'm doing that wrong. Because my virtual machine isn't bob.com or example.com, it's Ubuntu-3, and it's possible I just don't have that set up properly because I'm not going out and spending 20 bucks at GoDaddy to buy the exam you know, Ubuntu-3 uh, domain name. So it's all set up at Etsy slash hosts, and it's quite possible I've just, I, I just did it wrong. Uh, watching me stand up here doing it wrong again is not terribly helpful for you folks, so I figured I'd just stick with 8, which I can re reproducibly uh, fix. Dun, 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 dun. Right. So, and, so and, and there's a reason this is up here, and it's this. Agar depends upon Drush, uh, especially right now in the, the 4.0 series. It depends on the 3.0 versions of Drush. The Alpha 9 actually depends on uh, 3.1. Drush requires the pair console table thing and within the last week the nice folks who do console table changed how they handle uh, allowing people to download the files. <laughs> and so if you download a fresh, inst fresh install of Drush right now uh, it won't work because it'll say I can't find console table boom so this is until they're able to get the Drush installer 
working to pull down its files to the correct new way. This is a way on Ubuntu at least that you can pull down console table and then it'll work and you don't have to sit there going, why doesn't my console table work? Um, Dresh will complain that it wants console table in its own directory, but this actually works just fine. And uh, there's lots of other neat extensions in pair that you can get at from time to time. Hi, folks. Come on in. So, John, would you say that if you have these two, if you have Drush already installed and working, then you do not need these two to get started? That, that's correct. If you have Drush 3. Dot something already up and working, you don't need to worry about this. This is if you're starting from complete bare metal and you're trying to upgrade or install Drush, then you need that. And you've got a question. Is there a particular version of Drush that matches up with Ager? Like, you need a newer version of Drush for the newer version of Ager or something like that? Or are they pretty, uh, pretty... So, th so the question is, is, is there a specific version of Drush for each version of Ager? And as it happens, there is. Uh, Ager 3.0, which is the previous full working release, requires Drush 2.something because it uses the old Drush syntax where you could have spaces in the commands. By which I mean, and let me pull up a quick notepad here. Do, do, do. Yeah, thank you. I don't know why notepad always wants to... Right, so in the old Drush, you could do... Get out of the way. You know, Drush hosting sites with a space in the middle of hosting sites. And that's what the old Ager 3, uh, 3 .0, 3 .0, 0.3 wants. In Drush, uh, in Ager... Uh, so in Ager 0.4- alpha 8, this isn't confusing at all, you need at least drush 3.0. Ager 0.4 alpha 9 requires at least drush 3.1. So, unless you've got put that down, Ager 0.3 only Drush 2.x. So if you're keeping Drush up to date on your virtual machine or your environment or whatever, then you're probably fine as long as you stay away from 3.0. Now, you can have two different versions of Drush on your machine if necessary. If you've already got 3.x on your machine and you need to use 0.3, then you can and probably should install a 2.x version of Drush inside of var ager, uh, which suggests that now is a good time to start showing off var ager. Yay! So, one of the unfortunate... Th actually, let's show a little ager first. So one of the things about ager, however, is that it does not run on Windows. It's just a little too Linux-centric uh, to do that. It may run on Macintoshers, I'm not sure. Personally, I like doing a lot of my Drupal work inside of a Linux virtual machine, which has the benefit of, well, a couple of benefits. One thing, I can just pause my machine and shut down my computer and start it up again, and it's in the same position it was before. Uh, also, getting wireless to work with Ubuntu can sometimes be a little bit of a pain if you've got an odd machine, and by using a virtual machine, I sidestep all that. So, uh, so here's what happens when you bring up Agar. And we can go over some of the concepts real quick here. As you can see, I've got a list of sites on the left-hand side there. In this case, I've got agar.localhost, which is the agar uh, site. And I've also set up a Drupal site, which I've given the imaginative name of drupal.localhost. And then over on the right hand, I've got what's called the queue. Now, the queue is a series of tasks that Agar has done for me in the past. You can see I've been trying it out. I did a verify, I've done a backup, I've disabled and enabled the site, and I can even see a report of what happened when this was run. And even how much memory we used, which is really useful. 
Ager uses Drush. Drush uses the command line PHP. It doesn't hurt to go in and up the memory limit on your php.ini inside of the client directory, uh, just like it doesn't hurt to do that on your uh, Apache version as well. Um, so let me go over what these things are. So a platform is basically a, uh, a, a, Drupal, a directory containing Drupal that you've named as a node. These are all nodes. Everything you see on this page is a node. These are nodes. Those are nodes. These are platform nodes. I can go in, have a look. Tells me when it was verified, where it's at. So I've put my Drupal 617 in var agar profiles, Drupal 617. That's the web server it's on, the release it's running. I've also made it the default, and these are all the sites on that platform. So if I want to have a new Drupal site, well, all I have to do, well, the first thing I have to do real quick, because I'm running on a uh, virtual machine, is go in and create uh, go in and create myself a uh, a nice name for it. So if I want to create a new site, all I have to do is come in here, create content site, and say, okay, at dcla.localhost, I'm going to leave that where it is. This is who I want to be on this site. Uh, Agar is set up to a degree so that you can actually have people come in and create sites on your machines without you having to give them stuff. So if you're doing that sort of thing, you can actually have give the, the site over to somebody else. Which platform? Currently, my only platforms are agar.localhost, which is the agar instance itself, which I don't need any more copies of, or Drupal 6, so I'll do that. And then I just hit save. So now you can see over here on the right that we have a new task for installing DCLA localhost. Uh, we've got cron already set up automatically on this machine as part of installing uh, Agar. And so we just have to wait a few moments and it will install this Drupal site for me. It's got its own root password into the MySQL directory, so it's going to create the database for me. Oh, look at that. It's installed. We can go take a look. Oh, we're already on the page. Great. Fantastic. So it's created my database. It's gone through the setup, uh, what do you call it, uh, wizard, all that. The site exists. And to log in the first time, all I have to do is hit this button here, or link. Log in, set my password, <laughs> and uh, there we go. You push a button, you put in a password, you've got a new Drupal site running off of the same uh, directory. So this is using the same Drupal platform that I threw in before. It's just two different, you know, files in the sites directory that have been taken care of for me. I could sit here and spawn off new sites all day as I want to without ever having to actually hit the command line very much. Right. So if you wanted to share DBs on this? Well, if you need to share DBs... Right. Uh, in that case, you would need to get a little more tricky because uh, that's not the default way that Agar tends to work. And Agar likes a you can't do anything to your sites that p your your settings that PHP file because Agar will occasionally go in and yank it out and put in what it wants to be there. Uh, so doing the same database with that would involve a certain amount of going around through files and hacking at the moment. I'm sure it's, uh, this, this guy keeps waving his hand. Do you have? I'm sorry, I, just, I have another question. So. Oh, 
Oh, you've got a different quality. Okay, I thought you were trying to go like, hey, 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 I've got, I've got content. Sorry. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what, what you can, what the uh, best idea would be for doing that at the moment. Uh, Agar is very much still in an early stage. So, so okay. So you had a my question. Simple. Uh, if uh, you have an existing multi, simple multi site uh, setup. Can you that okay, so the question is, if you've got an existing multi-site setup, can you import that into Agar? And the answer is yes, actually, that is doable and quite simple, and I can probably actually do that. Let me take a look at what I've got in, in var dub dub dub. Uh, let me see. Well, we probably threw test beds. Now the the important thing is 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 the, it's got to be a multi-site. It can't depend on site's default. Agar only really works on actual named um, uh, URLs, not uh, not going in and doing the old. This is your thing. So let me take a look at what I've got in Drupal six sites. That's a good thing to show off, actually. Triple six sites, of course. <laughs> so let's create a quick and dirty uh, copy defect toast local host. <sighs> ah. Excuse my typing. There we go. Excellent. And let me real quick sudo g edit Etsy hosts. Do -do -do. So if you're not familiar with Etsy hosts, that's just where you can override and specify what uh, domain names map to what URLs. In this case, we're just mapping everything back to ourselves. All right, so let's test that real quick. Oh, right. That's not going to work immediately because, haha, -ha, I don't have it set up in the patchy. But that's fine because if we move it in, it'll get set up anyway. So, all right, so we've got this Drupal 6 thing that I've got there, and I think I've got the settings at PHP done properly. So what I do is I whoops, we need to be outside. So the easy way is we get outside of there, we do a quick copy of the whole install group multi-site installation to where we're keeping our Agar stuff. Now, personally I prefer using a uh, Because of permissions, it's easier if I do this real quick. So personally, I prefer using um, a profiles directory to keep all of my profiles inside of. It neatens things up a bit. Give that a second. All right, so there's my current uh, profiles. Let's quickly. Do a quick chone on the. Do, do, do. There we go. All right. So step one, I moved my multi-site whole thing, wholesale into my Agar profiles directory, and then I pop over here, or back over here, to my Agar site. All right. Now I want to create a new platform. Because the whole, it, because I moved the whole Drupal installation over, that's a new platform. So it's just like any other new node. Give it a name. Tell it where it is. Drupal six is where I put that. 
I don't want to make it the default platform. I hit save. Okay, so it's first going to go through and verify that this is a valid Drupal installation so it knows what they can do with it. And then it's going to look in the sites directory for any existing sites and hook us up with those. It will take a few moments, however. Um, so did somebody else have a question while this is running in the background? Is yes, sir. Uh, is it still naming its uh, databases at the known numbers of the site? It is an alpha 8. So the question was, is it still naming the databases after the node numbers in the site? And the answer is, it does in alpha 8, but it doesn't in alpha 9, I'm told. That's one of the things that got fixed. There's a huge ton of fixes between alpha 8 and alpha 9. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, which is probably part of the reason why I'm having so much trouble getting it moved over. Yeah. Would you touch on the node and node ID as it relates to the platform concept, just for a second? In fact, it is a node. It, it's a node. It's, it's right. The, the, the node is, well, it's, it's like having a node about notable people in the world, you know. The node represents the, the actual thing. In this case, the node stores, uh, the platform node stores where the code is and what we want to call it and whether or not we want to have it as the default. All right, so it's finished verifying and it knows that we have a test.localhost in the settings directory. Uh, or the sites directory. I keep getting that mixed up, I apologize. And now it's going to import that into the database. Now, it's not actually going to, it's, I remember, it's not actually going to change any of the database stuff, but I could be wrong. But uh, again, this is, if, if there's more than just the one, it would be importing all of them. But uh, there you go and test. So this is a, a, a database export that it's picking up? And right, well, it's, it's, it's looking, inside of the settings.php that was inside the test.localhost directory. Mm -hmm. It's following, you know, that's got the database information. It has its own um, data uh, root, effectively root. I call it agar underscore root just because it makes sense. It's got its own root user that it can manipulate databases with, which is why we don't have to go in and with all that tedious create a database, create a user, create a password. It handles all that for us. And in a few moments, it should finish up. Do, do, do. So if you do have multi-site or something, something, I'm sorry, um, something customized, you could put that into the seed and have it just start there. So it's like kind of a, you know, templated or you know, pre-configured. I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite so, understand. So, in, in, so if we have a, an import, does this just go through the installation, or, um, or are there customizations that you can put in there beforehand that you know when you create a new site? it automatically has you know, certain configuration values in it? Um, it can if you use an installation profile. Okay. Uh, that's basically what that's for. And I can start showing that off, actually. As you may have noticed, in this directory, I've got a tarball of Atrium. So let's spring that out. Let's make sure it's owned properly. Everything wants to be owned by Agar. I also like to include the group www.data, which I've put myself in, so I can look at what I'm doing. You may or may not want to do that in a production site. Of course, if you're running this in a production environment right now, you are probably braver than I am. It's great stuff, but it's still got sharp edges here and there. All right, so. Oh, oh, it did the import, and now it's verifying that the import worked. So on this page right now, that's the clue that we're still waiting for something. Right, the fact that it's gray. Now, if something broke, it would be this nice orange color, and we would be able to view it, and we'd be given an option to rerun the task. Uh, these are actually little little nodes, as I said. Uh, oh, that's the site. Let's pop up into content real quick. There we go. Oh, it verified while I was clicking around. So you can actually come in and look at these as a node 
And if we hit edit real quick, we can see that everything is hidden from us. Well, that's not helpful. Basically, this is this is a uh, a drush command that's being run in various steps. All right, so that's all verified. So let's real quick go visit. And then presuming, oh, there we go. There's all my test stuff. And it's now running in Agar. And all I had to do basically was copy it and create a platform node. Yes, sir. Now, once that's in Agar, can you migrate that to a different platform if you want to begin to away from like your import platform? Yeah. Well, what, do you mean like a Drupal, an Agar platform? Yeah, let's say you're taking, moving a site from a non Agar setup to an Agar setup, mm -hmm. and then you want to upgrade it to the latest version to a new platform. Ah. Is it, does it just then work <coughs> on any other site that you've imported it You could move it to a different platform. Uh, I believe just by using this migrate. Okay. Yep. So then it just works. Right. It, since it's got all the keys, it can handle a lot of these things for you. Let me real quick show my Atrium demo. So there it is, Atrium 1.0 Beta 7. So again, just create a new platform. One zero beta seven, one zero beta seven. There we go. Save. And I was going to real quick do another verify over there. Oh, and another question, good. So there's no shell account interaction. This. Doesn't have to manually provision shell accounts into these shell accounts. Like for SFTP access, so that your developer can work on the theme. Right. So in that sort of cases, yeah, you you want to have shell accounts set up so that your developer can uh, pull down copy. Well, actually, more likely is the case of you're going to have your developer working off of some sort of version control system and somebody else is going to be moving things up to the server itself. Uh, but yeah, you, you'll need your own setup for, for actually moving updates. Um, now one of the nice things is, is like we said before a bit with moving, um, migrating from one platform to another, is that when Drupal 6.18 comes out, what you can do is plop 6.18 down onto your into your profiles directory as a separate directory, migrate your platforms over from one code base to the other, backing up your data first, <laughs> because you always back up your data first, uh, but you move your stuff over from one machine, from one platform, you migrate it to the, the 6.18 platform, give it a try. Uh, if some suddenly, you know, all of your uh, event nodes blow up on you. You've still got your 6.17 directory sitting there just fine. All you have to do is put the database back. All right, so the open atrium verified. So we can just do a quick site thing. And at this point, I believe I already set that up. So I say I want, whoop, that's not what I wanted. I want Open Atrium. And you see it detected that Open Atrium's got its own install profile. So it allows me to choose. English sounds good. Oh, and a side note here, domain aliases. If you need a site to be available on two different uh, domains, but it's exactly the same settings, etc. Uh, you can put your other domains in here and it will just automatically create symbolic links in the settings directory so that if they're going to, you know, b1.localhost, then it, they get redirected to b0.localhost. Again, it's something you can do fairly easily from the command line, but it's just taken care of for you. So that's going to go off and install Atrium for me. Uh, okay. So, 
Question. Actually, before you even start using Ada, you just have to set up all the DNS entries to the right IP addresses? Right. You, okay. you do need to have your DNS entries set up. Uh, now, of course, if you have a star dot something dot com set up, then you don't have to jump through hoops like I am with the Etsy local hosts, and you can start spawning off all sorts of sub uh, three level domain items. Uh, and it's still installing. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, in in, a, in in that case, a more you know professional setup it would actually be a little easier because you don't have to keep worrying about uh, have I created this yet. But on the other hand, it's not that hard to go into Etsy localhost for when you're doing just messing around locally. Pretty. Yeah, that blue shows too. Okay. For a moment I got a little confused about color. So we'll give us a few more moments. How are we doing on time? Fairly well. How do you select how do you select which server inside the a, a node type server? Uh, I think I missed how you, how you select which server you want to deploy into the site to. Oh, I had there. Oh, so uh, the question is how do you choose which server you deploy to? And the answer is, well, having been playing around in virtual hosts, I'm not certain. But given how it's gone so far, I expect that it hasn't asked me to choose a server when I create a uh, create one of the sites because I only have one. Just like it didn't ask me to choose an install profile until I had two. Uh, you know, I've only got my current local host, my current server. I'll admit I haven't played around with that as much. Uh, here we can see some of the useful commands that they've got there. Let me have a quick look here and see what went wrong with installing Atrium. That's awful helpful, isn't it? <laughs> An application error. I did a bunch of other things. Oh, memory. How much fun is that? And here after I told everybody to watch out for that. Boy, is egg on my face. So you go into PHP 5, Cly. You didn't plan that all along? Oh, man, I wish I was that together today. Whoops. I forgot to use sudo. Yeah, you can tell I'm not all that together because I'm using gedit instead of like vim. If I was really cool, I'd use vim. No, that's too far down. And we scroll on down. Yeah, see? 32 megabytes. Drupal requires real power. Somebody just fainted from all the power. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <sighs> so, here's the one that failed. So we can hit retry. I was going to ask where the retry plugin was. There it is. I thought it was next to it, but I guess that... That, that would disturb the feng shui. <laughs> I wonder if that's a table or if they're floating. I'm an amateur themer. Ah, oh, it's a table. That makes more sense, though. I have a colleague back before who's allergic to using th tables and themes because, oh my god, something's up. Oh, I've got a question. At some point, could you just give a high-level overview about the differences between point 0.3 and point 0.4, because we're looking at point 0.4, and some of us don't have any still clue about point 0.3, so... I'm not really clear on the changes between 3 and 4, so that's not really something I can answer off the top of my head. Although I did install 3 once, it was very painful and took a long time. Uh, one of the benefits of the .4 
uh, series of releases has been that a lot of the configuration changes have gone into an install shell script, which is good. Trust me, it's so much better. Okay. Did it fail again? Doofus. That that that, that would be this. Yeah, at, at the beginning we hit that, and I I went over that earlier with uh, with the problem, and, and this is how you fix it: is these two lines. Actually, if you run Drush letters no Drush three series will install that itself. Except it can't right now because, as he said, they've changed uh, the people who do console table have changed their their their. Uh, Repository from CVS to SVN, and Drush is currently trying to get the uh, get the the code from the wrong kind of repository, probably at the wrong location, and uh, so at the moment it fails. So why did the retries fail? Oh God, provision site installed. I think that means that the uh, I think that means that the site itself is bad because of the problem they had before. So let's just real quick go in and let's try deleting it real quick. So I apologize for that. That didn't work on well. Chunk. Yeah, very helpful. All right. So let's try that again. So agar dot localhost blah 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 in the agar thing. That's weird. Before it gave me the choices. All right. All right. So. I didn't get as much sleep as I thought I did. There we go. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Especially if I miss my plane. Okay, let's let it do that again. Of course, it may run into its previous install. Drat. No, it, it just deleted the node. It didn't go into the file system and delete files or, I believe, databases. So we'll see how that does. I really should have done that first. I don't know if I got it done in time. This will be exciting. It's doing something. There goes my little monitor thing. Pumping away. Come on, you can do it. Uh, somebody have another question while we're waiting? There aren't any issues uh, like with press flow. Right? I don't know of any issues with press flow. I wouldn't expect there to be because really this is not doing. Hey, that worked. It installed. I can log into it. All right, so again, your php.ini in the CLI file under Etsy PHP 5, you really need to get that up there because it is a pain in the ass if things fail because of that. 
<laughs> Admin's not happening. Uh, it doesn't need to be done. Save. Not now. Go away. All right, so, and there we go. There's an open atrium site, all loaded up from scratch. No groups, not anything like that, but, you know, things are configured, things are installed. So as long as you have an install profile done up, then this will handle that quite nicely. All right, and we are rocketing towards the close of this session. So I wanted to take a few moments and just show you a quick walkthrough. Wrong menu, John. A quick walkthrough of installing Atrium from scratch. I love VirtualBox. Here's another quick question. Then we'll Certainly. Um, so, since Atrium really doesn't, in the daily course of doing nothing, impact you know your you, your your hard coded uh, seven files or whatever. What would be the downside of using uh, one of these outputs? What would, what would I, I, I can't quite grasp maybe because I haven't thought that much uh, what that would be. Well, the downside of using an alpha is that it's not definitely always going to work. And if you're using this in a production setting, you want things to always work. Uh, it seems to work fine. I haven't had major problems with Alpha 8 so far. Uh, but that's me saying so far. And I can't I, I can't promise anything, and the folks who are developing it can't promise anything. I understand that alpha S, after Alpha 9, they will come out with Alpha 10, and then, and then they're going to stop on new features, and they're going to work on bug fixes and going into a beta series until they have a 0 0.4 release, like they have a 0 0.3 release right now. Um, the other issue with using A uh, person from the audience just noted that another problem is that uh, alphas are in a constant state of flux and that uh, it's all changing as each release goes out, which is another good reason. So here is a brand spanking, only lightly used copy of Ubuntu. Whew, and I don't even have Dresh on here. So we're going to real quick... First step, we're going to pop over to where I had the these written down. Ah, there. Stop that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, sudo apt get install php pair. Mm -hmm. Yay for apt get. Do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. I remember when Linux was really scary. When, when you know, these days you want to install something and it knows how to install the preliminaries, and there's five different web pages you can Google up that'll tell you, hold your hand and tell you every step, and you know, ten comments by other people telling you how to how to do everything. Oh, this didn't work for me. I had to change this thing to this other thing because something changed since this was published. And uh, nowadays, it's 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 so much easier to do this sort of things. Like this, I pulled this off of the IRC channel for Ager. <coughs> right. Do I even have a web server on this machine? One is curious. How bare bones did I get this? That's my annoyed noise. Woohoo! Not even. This is great. Right, so installing Ager. Happily, Ager is not a very common name in the universe. And uh, just type it in. Bam, there I go. If you want to mess around with 9, there's the release thing over on the right here. 
where it goes into the instructions and all. Personally, I'm going to go in here. The Alpha 8 development release instructions. So there's a couple of things you need to install, obviously. We're going to need PHP, we're going to need MySQL, we're going to need Apache. We're also going to need Postfix. It wants to have working email and it will grump at you if you don't. So, sudo apt get install apache2 php5 php5 cli php5 mysql mysql server postfix. Whoop. Oh, I already hit a pad. Great. Whoop. I must hit the wrong button. <laughs> My bad. There it goes. So I'm literally just typing in exactly what they're telling me to do in the instructions. And this will pull down all of our good bits. Mm -hmm. I honestly thought I had more than bare metal here. All right, so you want to have a root user. It'll ask you for that again. Postfix says these are all your options. So for postfix, what I found is just going with internet site and then whatever your system mail name, whatever it comes up with, and it'll work well enough for what we're doing on a on a virtual machine. If you are installing postfix on a live server, talk to your system administrator. He will know how to do it better than you do, unless you are the system administrator, in which case you should possibly be giving this talk instead of me. Unpacking, undoing. All right. So, any momentary questions? You've got a question. Um, have you ever tried um, deploying a site using Anchor to instead of a host to a, port, a different port? Um, so instead of you know your host names on the, in the URL, just you know 8081, 8082, 8083. Can it? I I think there might be an option when you set up Anchor to allow for that. Okay. Anchor tends to, tends to hard code port 80 into the things it's doing right now. Uh, that sort of flexibility is possibly something that's coming up. Um, I haven't actually tried it myself, though. Um. Dun -dun -dun. Like with uh, Anchor sites, how does it handle, or uh, how is it handled uh, when you have, say, like custom modules? Um. Right, so custom modules are handled by just putting them into either the sites all modules directory or in, if it's something that's specific to one particular release, you could put it into the, into the site site name modules directory and just enable it as usual. Agar doesn't really care what's in the sites all directories. Well, it, it looks, because if you take a look at a site install, it'll list all the, all the modules that you've got in that particular uh, site. But uh, it, you, know, you can throw new stuff in there at any time. Oh, look, it finished. I'm not sure why it wants me to install sudo here, because I've never been in a situation where sudo hasn't already been available, but what the hey, throw it in there. All right, so you need get core, because it's going to pull down a lot of the stuff out of, out of get. So we're going to need to create an agar user, an agar account on the system. We're going to put that agar's home directory to be var slash agar, which you saw was the place where I was playing around with before. And we're going to make them a member of the group dub 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 data. It is 9.51. If you need to leave early to get to another session, I quite understand. I probably should myself. Happily, I don't remember it being that long now. Let's see. So add oh, sudo system group home var. So I'm not entirely sure what all this command does, but it's nicely listed in the thing, so I don't have to worry about that. sudo add user agar. 
Bam. Okay. So we've got the user. He's in there. Two other things. Apache or Ubuntu out of the box does not have the rewrite turned on. Happily, you can turn it on, you know, because we all like to have our sites with the clean URLs. Happily, we turn it on just by doing that. Let's see, init.d apache2 force reload. I forgot to put sudo at the beginning. My bad. Ah. All right. Hit the num lock there real quick. Okay. And then we need to create what's called a symbolic link to or from where where uh, Agar is going to be doing Apache stuff to where Apache expects to see Apache stuff. And these directories don't exist yet, but that doesn't seem to matter. And of course, once again, I forgot to hit sudo. I should probably have just changed to root before I did any of this crap, but there you go. And then we need to give Agar a little bit of sudo ability. sudo gedit etsy sudoers. And just like it says, Agar, all, no password, user sbin apache2 ctl. And here we're just saying, let the Agar user, oh, for cripe's sake. No, I did do the sudo. Why aren't you letting me save? For some reason, it's not letting me. <sighs> Apologies. I think it's more a case of something's not set properly. You could just say VI students. One word. One word, one word. Oh. How? Thank you. And <sighs> that's a problem. I don't remember my vi well enough. I need to escape. I need to get out of here. Quit. Escape. I hit escape. Colon, colon Q. Exclamation. Yeah. I haven't had to do this before. Ah, I don't know what it is. Hold on. Right, so obviously I'm hitting a snag here. Ah, I see. Pseudo chmod uh, six four zero. Oh. There. Bloody heck. Anger uh, equals no password. Anger S boom Apache to CTL. So I apologize for that. Then we need to pop into the database. Create the database that the Agar instance will actually be running on. Uh. And then we need to create
<sighs> and then a quick trip over the Etsy hosts. You're right, it is. I apologize for going late. Please, thank you for all for putting up with my uh, mistakes here at the end. I should have prepared a little more on the installing bit and just sort of ran into some crags there. Thank you very much. I hope this was useful to you. Uh, and, uh, you know, play around with this a little yourself. There is a uh, pound agar uh, room on... Uh, the free node.net, the same IRC uh, setup that you've got for your pound Drupal and pound Drupal local, uh, whatever your local channel is. It's sometimes very quiet, and sometimes it's loud. I'm sometimes there helping out. Thank you all for coming and have a good rest of the day. And now it's time to shut off my recording. Thank you for listening. Have